In this video, we're going to learn how to set up HTTPS for a site uh, running on an Apache-based web server. Specifically, I'm going to be working with a server running Ubuntu, but the instructions should be pretty similar for other Linux-based servers. If you're not familiar with what HTTPS is or why it's so important that our sites load via it, uh, check out this other guide that I have that goes over the full details of essentially the why of HTTPS. Uh, this video assumes you already know what HTTPS is, and we're just going to get into the how. We're going to show how to set it up. Before you jump in, you will need a site that is already configured on an Apache server that's running via just regular HTTP. Uh, the example I'm going to be using is I'm going to be actually setting this up on a subdomain of demo.codewithsusan.com. Uh, so you can see I can go to this. It's already loaded. It's just loaded via plain HTTP. My example is using a subdomain, but the instructions are going to be the same whether you're using a subdomain or just a primary domain. If you don't already have a site configured, I also have a guide on that that walks through how to get that set up. Uh, but assuming you have that set up, you're ready to go. Let's jump into the details. Uh, the first step to getting HTTP set up is we're going to need a certificate. And the role of the certificate is to essentially validate that we are the owners of the site that we're setting HTTPS up for. And when it comes to getting certificates, you can pay for one from a third party certificate authority. Um, there's essentially like different tiers of validation uh, and prices when it comes to purchasing certificates. Alternatively, you can get a free certificate from a nonprofit service called Let's Encrypt. And that's how I'm going to be showing things in this video. Uh, and that's sufficient for any site where you're not dealing with sensitive information. Um, if you are dealing with sensitive data, if you're doing like monetary transactions, you're collecting personal information from your user, it is worth it to go to that extra step and get the paid for certificate just because that's going to have additional levels of validation. Uh, and the end result is you're going to get a certificate that essentially has like a brand name associated with it. And to the extent that your visitors trust that brand, they will therefore trust you a little bit more as they're interacting with your site. And that's always a good thing to uh, instill confidence in your visitors, especially, like I said, if you're dealing with sensitive data. But for many situations, uh, including this demo, Let's Encrypt is perfectly sufficient. So let's jump into the details. In order to get set up with a certificate from Let's Encrypt, we're going to need a command line tool on our server called CertBot. Uh, and this is pre-installed on a lot of web servers. So the first thing you want to do is just check and see if you already have it installed. And you could do that by running this command certbot version. Uh, just to show this, I'm going to bring up my command line window. I am already SSH into my server. So I'm going to say certbot version. And this is what we're looking for, some sort of report about your version number. The version number itself might vary depending on where you run this. The main thing we're looking for here is it's not reporting back about command not found. If it says something about command not found, you don't have certbot installed and you'll need to install it. Uh, and I have a link over to the documentation for the certbot tool. Uh, they have really good sets of instructions for installing CertBot on a variety of different uh, server types. Once you've determined that CertBot is installed or you've installed it, you can begin the process for initiating a new certificate. You're going to do that with the command sudo CertBot. So bringing back my command line window, I will run that. And the first time you go to use CertBot, it's going to ask for your email address. It's also going to ask you to agree to the Let's Encrypt Terms of Service. I'm going to type A to agree. And then it's going to ask if you want to sign up for the newsletter. I'm going to type N for no. Now it's getting to the part where it's going to set up your certificate for your site. So it's enter or asking for the domain name for your site. So in my example, I'm going to say demo code with Susan.com. And now it's going to go through the process of obtaining a certificate for that site. Finally, it's going to ask if you want to redirect any incoming requests to your site that are coming via HTTP over to HTTPS, and I recommend doing this. So I'm going to choose option number two, and I'll hit enter. And if all went well, you should see these final confirmation messages, and you can go ahead and test it out. So coming back to the browser, I'm going to refresh uh, where I was loading the site via HTTP. And it should redirect me over to HTTPS. And you can see we've got this little lock icon here. Uh, it's no longer saying not secure, which is what it was saying previously. So it looks like everything was set up correctly. Uh, if we click the lock icon and go to connection is secure, we can actually see details about the certificate. So here it says certificate is valid. And if we click that, we can see more information about the uh, certificate itself. So as you can see with CertBot, the whole process of getting things set up is pretty easy. It takes care of it for you. 
That being said, it's always useful to understand when we're using tools like this to understand what it's doing, just in case we have to go in and make additional configurations. So let's just review how this was actually set up by CertBot. Coming back to my command line window, the first thing I'm going to do is move into the directory where my site configurations are for this Apache server. And that's going to be in etc Apache 2 sites available. And I'll go ahead and list the directory contents. And I want to focus in on these two configuration files um, that reference the domain that I've been working with. The first one is the one that was set up originally just to configure the site on the server. This is what is configuring all incoming HTTP traffic for this site. And then I'll use the cat command just to open up this config file so we can take a look at it. So what we see here is a basic uh, virtual host configuration for a site. And the key thing to note about this is that it's using port 80 for this configuration. So that's how we know that this configuration is for incoming HTTP traffic because typically HTTP is running on port 80. Now, the thing of note here related to our HTTPS work that we just did is these three lines down at the bottom, CertBot added these lines when we prompted it to do the redirect. And what this is doing is basically taking any incoming traffic to the site and redirecting it over to the HTTPS version. So if you ever wanted to come in and say, undo what we just did, uh, remove the certificate, undo HTTPS, one of the things you'd want to do is come into this file and delete these three lines. Let's also take a look at this other configuration file uh, that ends with LESSL. LE here is short for Let's Encrypt. This is the configuration file for our HTTPS traffic. So let's compare and contrast these two files. So again, I'll use the cat command to open that. All right, and notice this time, the port that we see here is 443, which is what we typically use for HTTPS traffic. Um, other things of note here that we didn't see in the regular HTTP configuration uh, is things like references to our SSL certificate files and our keys. Uh, all of this is configuration information needed for that HTTPS connection. So again, if you were in a situation where you were trying to undo what the CertBot did, you would actually delete this entire file to remove that HTTPS configuration. The other thing you would want to do as part of the deletion process is you would want to delete any of the certificates and the key files that CertBot generated. And there's actually a CertBot command that can help with this. So coming back to the notes, let's scroll down to the bottom. We're talking now about um, removing certificates. And this is the command that would remove any of the key or certificate files that were generated. So if you wanted to, again, undo what we just did, you would want to run this command in addition to deleting the HTTPS config that we were just looking at and editing the HTTP config um, to remove those redirect lines. Finally, the last thing I'll mention about this process uh, is just to be aware that these Let's Encrypt certificates that we create, they expire after 90 days. So every 90 days they need to be uh, renewed. Fortunately, though, this is not something you actually have to worry about because one of the other things that CertBot did for you is it created a scheduled job on your server that will do that renewal process for you every 90 days.